Welcome to Art Kitchen. I'm Mo Golden and I'm interviewing Nikki Kurtna, who is a multimedia artist, expressive art psychotherapist, and educator. Through her work, Nikki supports people to transform trauma into empowerment through creativity. She's devoted to playfulness, joy, and embodied earth-based spirituality. Nikki has a private practice in German and in English in Berkeley, California, and is adjunct faculty at Sophia University and CIIS, as well as supervisor at a Bay Area program called Art of Health and Healing. Nikki is on the board of the International Expressive Arts Therapy Association and Body Tales, a group that creates improvised movement theater with a focus on somatic awareness. You can learn more about Nikki and her work at express-explore-expand.com. This is the first of a two-part interview, so make sure you check out both. Hi. <laughs> Thanks so much for agreeing to talk with me. Um, so I want to just kind of jump in and ask when you first started identifying as an artist. Yeah, thanks first of all also for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Um, I would say in my early 20s. Before that I didn't have an identity as an artist and I come from a family. I have a brother who went to art school and he was an identified artist in the family and mm -hmm. I have a grandmother who was a painter. And so it wasn't, I wasn't identified as an artist in the label, but I always was enjoying the creative process. Mm. Drawing, writing, um, creating my own puppet shows and um, different things that I created with friends or for family and friends. So mm -hmm. I would say it's a part of our natural being as humans to right. express ourselves in those ways. Mm -hmm. um, but it took a while to see myself as an artist and I would say in the tw when I was living in New York City in my 20s that's when I started maybe more identifying as an artist mm. and then moving out to California in my end 20s I became an expressive art therapist or that's what I studied and yeah more and more identified as a multimedia artist. Mm -hmm. And how did that transition in your 20s happen? How did you start identifying as an artist? What made that happen and what was that transition like for you? I think it was kind of also from outside. I mean, I was painting, I was writing poetry, um, and I, some friends would say, I mean, identify me as an artist mm. and that kind of validated it or people liked my paintings or it was kind of an outside inside process and it was never as important and I think it was a bit because also of a shadow with family stuff mm -hmm. but I um, yeah I mean what shifted I don't know I mean getting older being an adult needing to have labels <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what happened <laughs> mm -hmm. that makes sense it makes sense too what you're saying of having it recognized from the outside because in some ways what changed is the word and the label and yeah. so if you were behaving this way but um, that word wasn't being put on you and then other people were seeing your behavior and attributing different words mm -hmm. and labels to it that makes sense yeah hmm how's your um, how's your process changed like when you were a kid you're making puppet shows and doing all kinds of creative things and then now you're an expressive arts therapist and if you were to look back through this course of your creative career since you were a child how has that process evolved and grown and changed for you that's a good question um, and i don't think there's an easy answer i think it comes with like your unfolding as a being you know and that mm -hmm. will also shift or change how you express yourself and I think for me, it's mainly the medium I express myself through has shifted over time. Mm. You know, as a child, yeah, I wrote a fairy tale that once won a prize. It was in a contest called Children Writing for Children mm. and the puppet show with my friends. And then we also wrote a screenplay about the life of Anne Frank. And, um, and I did some acting during my school, high school years. Mm. And then I came to New York, I was studying, I took a sculpture class in college and a drawing class and then I always doodled, I love doodling. And out of those doodles, sometimes paintings evolve or other things. And then I started, when I studied expressive art therapy, I started going into movement and dance. That's when I came to California, I focused on that more. 
and I um, did authentic movement and then body tales with a, a somatic mm -hmm. um, storytelling healing practice and also went through performance training with that and after that started performing by myself in shows or in, with other friends um, in groups yeah or also by myself mm -hmm. and so I would say what shifted is just sometimes where the focus is how I express myself and through yeah. what medium mm -hmm. Uh, poetry st has stayed with me, painting has stayed with me, although now I do more drawings and um, watercolors, less with acrylics, although I want to get back into that. Mm -hmm. um, and I have done a lot of dance movement related things. Mm -hmm. um, haven't done as much, I mean the poetry is more also often that I write for myself, but mm. it has stayed with me in different ways. And mm. And do you do you notice that there's like certain a certain medium that's useful for um, certain creative content to come through or certain stages of your life? Is it that clear or precise? Mm, I would say that dance and movement helps shifting when I feel more stuck and it can help with the flow of writing, for example. Hmm. And I notice often when I'm in a dance movement space, and I'm often more in a context of what we call the conscious dance movement, which means, you know, we do freestyle dance either to live music or recorded music. Mm -hmm. And through that, and being an improviser, since that has been my form, mm -hmm. I notice when I'm in that, those processes that it often inspires me to write mm. something. Um, and it helps with the writing. But sometimes there's also, like, I like to write and then, oh, what movement comes with that? But it's, I think it's more the movement and the dance helping me with the flow of other things. Yeah. Um, I think that's mainly what I would say I have experienced. And it's also interesting because in the last couple of years, I was also in a play called The Death at the River Ganges. And I was playing an old German woman in India who ends up dying in the play, <laughs> but, mm. or she went to India to die. And um, in that I had to learn scripts, which was very really different from my improvising. And right. it was very interesting to just experience that. I mean, I helped with also writing the play and, and, um, and helping in different ways with the play. But just learning to embody somebody I'm not really, although there were elements of that character, was based on my life story mm. and my experiences. It was still very different from just improvising, telling my yeah. story in the moment. Yeah. And what I noticed in that time when we had also the shows, it was just like, whoa, yeah, out of a sudden I'm evolving in this person that I'm not, but mm. also I am. But mm -hmm then it also like was questioning or like, yeah, something happened within my identity or how I related to myself, to my body. Mm -hmm. And it was really, yeah, I enjoyed that process too. While I prefer improvising, I really did enjoy also the collaborative ac aspect of that um, play and working with others around it. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you work some with like performance rituals too. Can you talk a little bit about that work? Yeah. Yeah, for me, I mean, performance feels like a ritual, a prayer, a ceremony, because there's a certain pattern, a certain rhythm, a certain structure where we, I mean, I'm allowing an energy to move through me, to be channeled, to mm -hmm. be expressed, and hopefully touch others in some way or another, but also I myself often am transformed and there's some sense of transcendence where I don't even know necessarily always what comes out. I might have some seeds of a story or some ideas, mm -hmm. but how it in the end comes out, since it's improvisation, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are surprising moments of what comes out and how it comes out. Um, so in that way, it feels very much like a ritual to me. And I often also use prayer and my connection to the elements, to earth, as part of helping me, supporting me to trust mm -hmm. what's coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a prayer of a, a way of like honoring life and honoring what's alive in me and what's sacred in life. And for me, it's about, you know, the breath, the body, the 
um, bringing forth what I encounter in this experience of being in this body, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so that in that way it feels also mm -hmm. like a ritual. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's something so powerful um, about the engaging the body, I think, too. And I'm hearing what you're saying with, with the performance and the performance rituals and what you're saying about using movement and then writing, that there's something so powerful about m getting your body moving that really like allows energy to come through um, in a deep way. So that's cool to hear you talk about that. Yeah, and I think also another aspect that I um, got in touch with or noticed in my process of doing authentic movement and body tales, you know, the connection of like, it's not just my story I'm holding or carrying, I'm also carrying and holding the story of my ancestors. Mm -hmm. And those stories came out a lot, like also, mm -hmm. you know, be growing up or being born in Germany, not never having experienced war, but um, still the intergenerational trauma that existed, you yeah. know, and how the unprocessed trauma of my parents who were children during the war was passed on to me, mm -hmm. you know, in different ways. Mm -hmm. All the stories of the war that I have heard or collected over the years, but then also sometimes not known and things emerged. Mm -hmm. And I do believe when we work with this material, it shifts also something and it impacts others. Even like if my parents don't have the opportunity to really work with their trauma or the things that happen to them, you know, and ways me working with it, I do think has a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And also realizing, okay, the story that I'm living is not only mine while I'm experiencing it through myself, through yeah. my story. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. And that raises, that rippling out really raises a question for me about where that content comes from and um, how it comes through us as artists. Do you um, experience like that legacy of trauma, for example? Do you experience that as something that has just been in your body waiting to be worked through? Or do you think it's something you're tapping into um, that's available but outside of yourself? Or what's your kind of sense or experience of how that creative content or that insight comes to you? I would say it's both, you know, there's a tapping into as well as just it's emerging. There's always an element of mystery there, too, that is, I don't think, explainable, mm -hmm. you know, or um, grabbable. But yeah. it's definitely I have had that experience of tapping into something as well as just, um, yeah, also in that tapping into it's then also shaping and a forming that mm -hmm. then comes out of that tapping mm -hmm. into but the you know raw creative process is just happens you know one of the m things i mean i'm saying i'm a multimedia artist and i would say music is my least developed uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> form you know but and more and more i have been using it now in groups in my work as a teacher and um teaching creative expression um, and I'm, I'm and I love singing and I love making music but I'm not very good you know mm -hmm. and it, and allowing not to stop me that, that judgment right. or that story that I'm not good I can't do it or you know, I come from a family that just can't sing mm -hmm. you know it's like whatever it yeah. doesn't matter let the passion let just whatever keeps you alive go for that you yeah. know and I do think that is also I mean the dynamic what blocks and what facilitates a creative process has a lot to do with that if we have a lot of judgments or how things should be that mm -hmm. can really stop us to allow that life force that creativity is part of to come through us mm -hmm. so that's where I feel the most alive you know and allowing myself to feel alive even if it doesn't sound always great yeah. or yeah. doesn't look great or I don't, you know, whatever. Yeah, and it's so, I just feel like it's so rare to hear someone say, I love this, it's useful for me, and I'm bad at it, <laughs> you know? Like, you don't hear that, and yet I have that experience too. And yeah, it's just like, there are other things that it can be for besides performing or being good at it. 
Um, and that you might, it's not even like you're working towards getting good at it. It's like you could just be bad at it and it could still be this like really rich tool for you that's really fun. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, I get very self-conscious once I get instructions. Like I'm not very good in dance lessons. That's why I like freestyle movement and dance, mm -hmm. you know. Once I get instructions, it's like, I get very discoordinated, uncoordinated. Same with music. I mean, I learned the recorder when I was young, mm -hmm. you know, and I can do that. And then I went to Africa and did some djembe drumming. And, and, but I was always a beginner, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I stayed the beginner the 21 days we were there and we, you know, drummed for three hours a day. And, but there was something and it was actually, I did get that again also. It was refreshing for some people who are much more good in following directions mm -hmm. uh, than I am, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and I, yeah, I just, I want to keep that alive, the playfulness, the curiosity, because I do think when you look at children, they naturally do stuff like that. It's just one way of exploring the world, exploring ourselves, connecting with each other. Mm -hmm. And I do like to go back to the original, like we all have sound in us. Yeah. We are sound, we are frequencies, you know, and mm -hmm. for me that being in that creative process or in the zone, mm -hmm. it's just aligning with the larger beingness of the world, of the universe, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and going also beyond our human story mm -hmm. of how things should be or right and wrong. And right. Yeah. Mm. And so you're saying like about following directions and versus like this free form. How was it for you um, in the play where you were learning lines and having to rehearse and do blocking and, and get better and then perform? Um, you said you had a positive experience with it. How did that, um, how was your relationship with um, following directions and being more disciplined and refined in that project? I think part of what helped was that I helped write some of the script and mm -hmm. I mean in the words or whatever beforehand and then also was able to adjust some of it if it didn't fit with me at all yeah. um, and I think there's one moment that I remember where somebody gave me some directions and we had some of a conflict around that but hmm. but I stayed with it you know and it was just I think it is I think Martha Graham or somebody said that but it's like sometimes the structure also then helps you to create a new level of creativity, Definitely. you know? I mean, I do think there is a balance between structure patterns as well as then the chaos that's also necessary for creation. Mm -hmm. So in some ways the form, I, I'm not rebelling against form, you mm -hmm. know? It's mm -hmm. more like sometimes it can help me also to shift me in a certain way, form me, shape me, where I don't get stuck in my own Sure. patterns. Mm -hmm. So in that way, I do feel like it supports also another level. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think it's, I mean, I am in, right now con contemplating of taking a painting class or something like that, which I hardly ever formally did. And I'm, because I want to lo learn also some more of that sure. to then increase maybe the way I express myself, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, um, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, so will you kind of guide us through a little bit of your creative process, how things emerge and unfold and become something? Um, give us just kind of a, a description or a step-by-step -step or some kind of um, peek into how you work. Hmm. I mean, I'm thinking right now, maybe just in terms of the improvised storytelling, for example, I might, you know, think about a moment that in some ways had an impact of me in me, or I see a moment of like seeing the light coming in and shining there on the ground. And then I start with that, you know, and I just think about light, ground, um, and moments that touched me like I love the season for example the fall bringing forth ah, there's a certain peace in the season of the fall that allows me to dive deeper into my soul and maybe it is because I was born in that month I don't know 
but the fall brings me closer to me, to the contemplation, the reflection of here, of now, of when, and the past. And it is an ever unfolding process. So this was just a short moment and I could have moved a little more and I could pick up some instruments from <laughs> over there. And so I, I think it's hard to describe it step by step because it changes all throughout the time and I don't like if it's forced it doesn't like if mm -hmm. I sit myself in front of a blank canvas <laughs> and then I draw or you know with painting sometimes I have a certain vision and that is frustrating when I can't bring it out the way I want so yeah. right now I just allow myself to just allow the movement of the painting to happen rather than trying to replicate something that's in my brain mm -hmm. um, and I find it helpful when I'm in an environment where there is an environment of non-judgment. It allows me to go deeper and just see mm -hmm. where I'm drawn, you mm -hmm. know, and follow that. Um, I don't think there is a step-by-step -step process for me personally. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I sit down every morning and write <laughs> 10 pages like some writers do. Yeah. It's not the way I work, you know, mm -hmm. it's more like wow, out of a sudden I'm sitting in Bart and a poem comes to me, a line, and I start writing it down and then I might work with it later more. Mm -hmm. And the, out of that I might create a performance piece, you know. Mm -hmm. Or last year I had a lot of like images coming up about my whole story, my life, the, my birth and how birth impacted me and birth and death and what do we do in, in between kind of thing, you yeah. know. And, um, and, yeah, and it was active in me for a long time, and then it dissipated. And I haven't done anything with it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Because right now, something else drew me, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is how it works for me. So it's, yeah. it's not a step-by-step -step process, and it's, it changes. It's like, yeah, you know, when I dance the whole day, it really increases, like, just this whole sense of rhythm. Mm -hmm. And I um, and I remember, I mean, what's very stuck with me is also a whole day where I was just painting, and it was in a painting class, painting process, and the guy just did a short guided meditation with us, with an entry point, and from that we started painting. Mm -hmm. And we painted the whole day. And I just remember, and then out while I was painting, I had poems emerge. Mm. And then, I mean, I was so alive at the end of the day. It was just so nice to feel just the juice running through my whole being, you know, mm -hmm. and being excited about it. Yeah. And having also a container. I think that's, for me, what the creative process is. is like there's a container where I can express some things that otherwise are hard to express or something emerges and it, it highlights something that I, I mean, for me, it's very spiritual or mm -hmm. connected to spirit, where it's something is emerges out of nothing. Mm -hmm. And it can be through anything, dance, painting, poetry, um, clay, sculpture. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it sounds like you're saying like that it's not a step-by-step -step process. It almost feels like circular to me when I'm hearing you talk, mm -hmm. where it's like, this theme or this something like you're saying the light on the floor and then kind of like circling and riffing off of it and making connections and associations mm -hmm. yeah i would say that's, <laughs> yeah mm, cool circular yeah thanks for watching and remember to like share and subscribe we want as many people as possible to find out about the inspiring artists who come on art kitchen the YouTube channel is youtube.com slash videos, and you can support the project at patreon.com slash mo.